I think you'll find this video exciting because until now we've just been talking about the Federal Reserve in the abstract and I was drawing little boxes to represent balance sheets. But this is the actual Federal Reserve balance sheet and I took a date that was before all of this silliness started happening in the banking sector just so we could kind of see what it happened what a Federal Reserve balance sheet would have looked like in a normal environment and then we can actually in future videos compare what they've done since then and then we can get a better insight into all of the different uh, machinations that the Federal Reserve has done to kind of try to keep banks liquid and solvent and to keep everything going and we can debate whether they've been good or bad or they're just keeping banks in kind of zombie mode. But anyway, this is this is the Federal Reserve's balance sheet as of February 14th, 2007, so before all of the craziness happened, although a little bit started. This was before the Fed started taking really aggressive action to to uh, provide liquidity for the markets, but here are the assets. So first of all, we have the total assets number, and that's just interesting to look at. 870, these are all in millions, so this is 871 billion dollars of assets. So let's just get the big picture. There's 871 billion in assets. Let me draw that here in our traditional box diagram. So if I were to draw the assets, this is the assets. The sum of all the assets over here is 871 billion dollars. And we know that the liabilities plus equity better add up to 871 billion. Let's see, what's the total liabilities? Total liabilities is 839 billion. So that will give or take 840. So the liabilities, I'll do it in a different color. The liabilities are 840 billion, give or take a little bit. Actually, it should be, they should have the same width, not that the width matters that much, but they should be, look, so the liability should be 840, 840 billion. And then whatever's left over should be equity, right? Assets minus liabilities. What you have minus what you owe is, is what, you, what you're left with for the owners. And of course, owners of the Federal Reserve, you kind of have to take with a grain of salt. They really don't have the upside of traditional owners. They're really just kind of stakeholders. What's left over is the equity. It should be roughly 31 billion. 31 billion of equity. And let's confirm that by looking at the actual balance sheet. And here we have it, total capital is 31 billion. So big picture, it, so far it's kind of meeting up with how we've envisioned a Federal Reserve balance sheet. But let's dig a little deeper and see if we can find interesting things and things we've talked about. And, and uh, hopefully at this point we should actually understand all of it, all of the lines of the Federal Reserve. So let's focus on the assets for now. So the assets are just this part of it. Okay, so it has, this is what? This is 11 billion of gold certificate accounts. Uh, that's some type of rights on gold. Let's see, gold certificate accounts. Let's see if they have any other gold anywhere. Coin, 1 billion. But this is all small potatoes, right? I don't know what special drawing rights certificate account is, but it's very small relative to the big pie, right? There's 871 billion of assets. This is just kind of almost rounding off error. Here we have a big chunk of something. Actually, I think this 11 billion is actual gold because I don't see it anywhere else on their assets. So I think, but if you combine, uh, roughly, I don't know if what this this thing here is, but if you combine this and this, it's saying that the Federal Reserve is because I don't see gold anywhere else here that it's holding eh, roughly 12 billion dollars worth of gold, which really isn't a lot of gold when you consider the total size of its balance sheet. The big piece right here. Let me pick a different color. I'll do it in the purple. The bit has securities, repurchase agreements, and loans. 808 billion, so almost 809 billion. So this is a big piece of the Fed's balance sheet. You know, out of the whole, out of the whole 871, 808. So pretty much, it's like you know, it's almost like that much of it. Or actually, maybe a little bit less of that. Are these securities and things like that? And let's see what kind of securities they have. And they break them down. So this 808 billion is made up of these things right here. The bulk of them are US Treasury loans, right? So these are going to be bills, notes, and bonds. In, OK, so to just explain, a Treasury bill, and I've done videos on this, this is essentially a US a, a loan to the government for a year or less. So it's just a, a, a loan to the government that matures in a year or, or in three months. Notes and bonds, these are loans to the US Treasury that have longer maturities. Notes are up to 10 years. Bonds are more than 10 years. 
And then inflation index bonds, I'll do a whole video on that in the future, but these are essentially treasuries that are indexed to inflation, so you can kind of hedge out a little bit of your inflation risk. But needless to say, the big picture is, is that 780 billion of the Fed's assets are treasuries. Loans to the federal government. So let me just draw that here. So, you know, a pretty pretty big piece, roughly, you know, that much is treasury. So most of what the what of what the Federal Reserve owns are treasuries, and that's consistent with everything we've gone over so far. And that accounts for everything up to here. And then what's interesting, what we just talked about, repurchase agreements. Thirty billion repurchase agreements. And I don't know 100%, but I'm guessing that these are someone came to the discount window and essentially borrowed $30 billion from the Fed. And it's not just someone, it's probably multiple people came and borrowed $30 billion from the Fed. And they gave treasuries as collateral, but as we know, just the way repurchase agreements work, they actually kind of sold the treasuries to the Fed and then the Fed will agree to buy it later. But it's essentially collateral. So these repurchase agreements, they're included in these, secur in these securities because they're not just agreements, right? They actually are, they're probably treasuries, or they might be other types of highly rated securities. And we'll learn in, in future videos that the Fed has lowered its standards over the last year as in terms of what type of collateral or what type of securities it's willing to trade in these repurchase agreements. But in this situation, it looks like about $30 billion. And it, you can also, you know, you give a clue of what repurchase agreements are, because here they say securities held outright, right? So there's nothing there's no repurchase agreement they're not there's not there's not some contract where they say they're going to sell this to someone else at a, another price at, but these are repurchase agreements so that, these are kind of more collateral for loans and then they have outright loans 49 million that's pretty much peanuts in the federal reserve world so the bulk is treasuries a little bit of repurchase agreements and then there's other assets they don't break out what this is maybe there's some gold in that I'm not sure bank premises the buildings of the Federal Reserve are worth $2 billion. I mean, they have what is this, 12 banks around the country, and I'm sure they have a bunch of other things. So, And then items in process collection, I don't know what these things are. But these are all small potatoes. The big thing is that the Federal Reserve's assets are predominantly U.S. Treasuries. At least they're predominantly Treasuries right now. Now let's look at the liabilities. And to some degree, this is much more interesting. So Federal Reserve notes, net of Federal Reserve bank holdings. Federal Reserve notes. So Federal Reserve is $769 billion. So when I talked about notes outstanding, that's what this is. These are Federal Reserve notes that have been printed, and they're liabilities, right? Because the Federal Reserve Bank printed these notes and then used them as currency, and so they're liabilities now because someone can come back another time and say, hey, give me back the, you know, the value of these things. And that's a bit of an abstract concept. But roughly, I don't know, 700 something of this are notes outstanding. This is money that the Federal Reserve had printed. And then the, there's some reverse repurchase agreements, which essentially, for some reason, the Federal Reserve used repurchase agreements to borrow from someone else. It has a little bit of deposits, right? And these deposits have actually grown dramatically in, this pa in the past year. It has $22 billion of deposits. So these are actually deposits that banks are keeping with the Federal Reserve. The U.S. Treasury actually keeps some money there. Depository in institutions have $17 billion. And actually, that's how the Federal Reserve traditionally has paid its expenses, is that people put deposits with the Federal Reserve. So let's say that these are deposits from banks. It's, not, it's a very small piece. It's like $17 billion. These could be deposits from member banks. But the Federal Reserve does not pay interest in these deposits. They don't pay interest on these deposits. And then they can take these deposits and buy treasuries or other securities and get interest on them. So they're essentially getting free interest. And that's what they use to actually fund their operations. And any excess after funding their operations goes back to the U.S. Treasury. So it's not like you know Ben Bernanke can, can fly around or drive a Bentley or something. And then I don't know what this is, foreign official. These are small, these are nothing items. So the bulk of it is money that had been printed and that's a liability of the Federal Reserve now and then there's a little bit of deposits from depository institutions and the Treasury has kept some money with the Federal Reserve as well and then everything left over is the equity anyway I thought that would be pretty neat to see that you can actually look at what the Federal Reserve's balance sheet is right now you can actually just do a web search for it you'll find it in a bunch of different sources and you can actually analyze it you now have the tools to look at that and make sense of it and what's even more interesting is to actually ca is to compare this balance sheet with the current Federal Reserve balance sheet, and then you can know everything that they've been.